Welcome to the Austin All Day Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Powers, and this is episode 14. I'm here with Chef Matthew Frederick of Vanilla Orchid Catering. May 6, 2019, the podcast officially has been happening for one month. And according to the statistics that I can see, it's doing pretty well. So a genuine thank you to everyone who is listening. I truly hope that you're enjoying these podcasts. And thank you to every chef who's walked in the door and taken a second out of their day to have a conversation with me to share with everybody. Okay, on to things that are coming in the future. Spread & Co., Get online and check out SpreadingCo.com or get on Instagram right now and check out at SpreadingCo. You guys will be very impressed. These guys make cheese and charcuterie boards, handmade stuff, and deliver it straight to your door. It's beautiful. It's worth worth taking a second to check it out. And eventually, they'll be on the podcast. So go support some local, local stuff there. So one month, here we go. You guys sit back, grab a drink, and check it out. Chef Matthew Frederick. Yep. Yeah. How's it going, man? Excellent. How about yourself? Well, that's good. That's good. We're, we're doing this in the morning, a little change of pace. Yeah. Get it done early. Yeah. <laughs> got the coffee. Got the Topo Chico. Usually the uh, standard's been whiskey and, and beers. So this is a nice change of yeah. pace. Yeah. <laughs> a little early for that for me. I would have said the same, but yesterday was the meet at 10 a.m. So, <laughs> well, you know, we're, we're just rolling with it. So how's everything? It's going really well. We're getting busier and busier at uh, the Vanilla Orchid, so it's busy. I always say orchard, but it's orchid. It's orchid, yeah. Do you get a lot of that? We do. You do? Okay. Even the the laundromat right next door where we drop off all of our linens and jackets every time. They're like, oh, Vanilla Orchard. Like, <laughs> you see the sign every day. Right. <laughs> so. You're currently the executive chef over there? Correct. One location on Burnett? Yeah, that's the only, that's our main kitchen location. We don't have any other at all. Okay. So. And main events are like weddings or just... All... We do more corporate than weddings. Oh, you do more corporate. Yeah, we do more corporate events than weddings. Um, the wedding scene is... we Actually, we have two weddings coming up on one Saturday, so I okay. can, we still get them, but uh, we definitely do more corporate. But will you end up being in both of those? No. Okay. Actually, I'm going to be out of town for that one. Okay. Uh, we're taking a vacation down to Atlantis. Atlantis. Mm -hmm. It's a big resort uh, in the, uh, I think, Bahamas. Oh, nice. How long have you guys been planning that? Five months or so, I think. That's exciting. Yeah. It'll be nice to to get out and have a nice relaxing vacation, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Traveling is a bit stressful, but... (laughs) But but traveling is stressful, but once you get there... Once you get there, it's going to be nice. Lots of pool... Relax, yeah. take it easy. There's a big casino there, but okay. we'll see how that goes. How what's the how long? Uh, I think we'll be there seven days. Nice. And it's you, the wife, me, the wife, the two kids, and then uh, my father in law, mother in law, and his oh. brother and sister. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. Cool. Yeah. So big old family trip. Yeah, I've got uh, my folks don't live far from here. Actually, my daughter's over there now. But it's always nice to have family close by. Are they close by at all? Or? Yeah, they live in, they live in Cedar Park with us, and then my parents actually live um, in Northwest Austin. Okay, so, so good. That's all of us are close. My sister lives here now too. So right, it's nice having the whole family around. Absolutely, the catering is keeping you busy though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We we yeah very busy. It's come up as a topic here a few times, mainly because I wasn't completely familiar with the whole catering side of, you know, the culinary. But when I associate like a restaurant, you know, you're there, whatever it is, morning till night or late hours. And catering, some people might have the assumption that it's an easier path. Uh, but I guess I, we've, that we've kind of shot that down a little bit. Yeah. I what's, <laughs> what's your take on? Because you've not, you don't come from catering. Or is this the first catering? This is the first catering, like outside catering place I've ever worked at. I've done the banquets at hotels, which is very similar. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But um, it's different. It's a lot more challenging because we have to bring the kitchen and all the equipment and whatever we need right. to the event. Yeah. Whereas when you're in a hotel, it's so much easier just to be like, oh, we forgot these pair of tongs. Like, go to the main kitchen, get the tongs. Yeah. Um, whereas you forget it there, and you're like, oh, well, 
somebody's either going to drive 45 minutes back to the kitchen to go get a pair of tongs or you got to figure something out. So. Right. And I, I don't know if I worded that right, right. but you, do you know what I mean? Before going into catering, what was your impression of catering? Um, it was pretty close to what I thought it was going to be. Okay. Uh, the, the pack outs are, are what they, what we call them, the pack outs when you have to gather everything together to, to head out the door. Yeah. That's the, the challenging part that I didn't really think all the way through before so I started. when you do that, are you referring to like keeping things hot or do you do that on site? We do it on site. You we bring on site. ovens on site and heat everything up there. Um, cook it there if we can. So we always give ourselves, I think, about two hours, depending on the event and, and the size and everything. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's one, to go there, set up, start cooking, finish cooking, and then get it out onto the you know buffet or plates or whatever we're doing. Okay. Do you guys have like direct competition with uh, any other catering companies? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's always going to be competition, which is good, though, because then it... Uh, ha- having that much business to be able to have competition is nice. So. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, there's, uh, I mean, just catering is something that a lot of people don't even think about when they're, but I mean, you get, do you went to school mm-hmm. in Atlanta? I went to, yeah, Le Cordon Bleu in Atlanta. Le Cordon Bleu in Atlanta. And that's a part of it. You know, you learn about catering there. Yep. yep. But uh, this is the first catering for you. How long have you been in Vanilla Orchard? Orchid. Orchid. <laughs> <laughs> this will be three years this month, actually. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I know right before that, you were at Lake Austin Spawn Resort. Yep. Yep. That's closer to home, right? Yeah. Well, it's about the same time from home okay. to get to, to Burnett Road than it is to get all the way down into to Steiner Ranch. How was it... Uh, Working out there. I know when you go out there, it's so peaceful. Yes. it's That was a beautiful piece of property. And, yes. and the resort itself was really fun to work at because it was, you know, a lot of high-end food and, and line cooking and, and just fun. And I, I liked working for Stefan. He was a good guy. All right. Not to mention you had, you had the, uh, the classic French <laughs> yes, chef yeah. to work for. I, mean, I tell you, though, when I went there for an interview, yeah. I didn't know it was a, a man. When oh, I went there, okay. <laughs> you go and you go. Have you been there? Oh yeah. So you yeah. go to the gate and you have to punch in and say, "Hey, you know, I'm here to sharp." You know, for me it was I'm here for an interview. Yeah, right. With Stephanie. Stephanie. <laughs> oh, it was like a misprint. <laughs> well, it just I didn't really read it through all the oh, way. I was gotcha. at the time I was Stephon. just going for a part time job. Yeah. So yeah. I was just two days a week there yeah. when I first started. And so I, I didn't pay too much attention. I was just like, all right, maybe Steph, Stephanie. Okay. Yeah, that's a little shocker when you walk into him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tall so, Frenchman. Well, luckily they have that front gate because I said, okay, so I'm here to see Chef Stephanie oh. for an interview. And she's like, oh, do you mean Stefan? I said, oh, yes. <laughs> so luckily I got corrected immediately before yeah. I got to meet him. That so is good. Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't quite the shock. Right, right. But, yeah. <clears throat> but he's, he seems like a, a good guy. He's a great guy. Great to work for. Um, Great chef, just great all around guy. Yeah, he told me he uh, lives like right there, right? Yeah, he's within walking distance of the hotel. Oh, that's that's amazing, right? Yeah. And it's so <laughs> beautiful down there. Yeah, he would come in, cook himself breakfast, and then head out. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. So, how long were you over there? Because you you're originally from New York. Correct. I was born in New York. Um, my dad worked for General Motors, so he worked for the one uh, in Terrytown. So we went from there to Massachusetts and then back to New York because they, they had shut that plant down. Yeah. And then they reopened it. So New York, Massachusetts, back to New York, and then they shut it down permanently in, I think, 93 or 4, somewhere around there, 95. And we so moved to Atlanta. That's like high school for you? Uh, I was in eighth grade. Eighth grade. Yeah. Just before high school. Just before high school. And then we moved down to <laughs> Atlanta, and I lived there pretty much until I started my culinary career. So you went from the cold winters to the... Um, Heat in Atlanta, yep. and now you're here. So this yep. is nothing, nothing new to you. No, it's it's Atlanta's really similar to here, like yeah. seasons wise. So okay. it worked out really nicely. Atlanta is beautiful, though, right? Mm-hmm. I loved it there. So what got you started into uh, the culinary arts? Well, I was actually a mechanic for a Ford dealership for six years, okay. and I just didn't want to do it anymore. I don't know what it was. I just Got an itch. Yeah, got an itch. I left, and I, I always enjoyed cooking, and I always enjoyed, you know, making food and stuff. So I said, all right, let me give this. So you're working as a mechanic. You're going home, and you're kind of cooking as like a, um, as, yeah, just a leisure. Yeah, leisure. Uh, and you know, when we were younger, we always used to do um, you cook at home a lot. My mom did. And then also I think one of the driving factors was when I was really young, 
we would do the whoever cooks doesn't clean rule. So maybe in a, in a fit of laziness, right. I tried to cook more so that way I didn't have to clean. Yeah. So, so do you think possibly like, you know, watching the, the, your dad's stuff get shut down, maybe kind of, maybe, I mean, cause you said just randomly decided you didn't want to become, you know, but like maybe you had a little fear that it wasn't going to work out that way, you know? Mm, I don't know what it was. Yeah. In all honesty, I have no idea. I just was a mechanic and then something, it, it's... I don't know. Just to ch- decide to change course. So does that spark culinary or does that, I mean, culinary school or does that spark uh, like a restaurant? That spark culinary school. Okay. So okay. I so was that's living. A, that's a big change. Of it, was, it was a huge change. Okay. So you so, decided I need to learn a different trade and like go in a different direction with my life. Yeah, pretty much. Well, that's cool. Yeah. And here you are. I was 27. Okay. When I went to culinary school. Nice. So. I started culinary school, and luckily I had just moved back in with my parents not too, about six or eight months before that. Uh, I was living with my sister. Something happened with the house we were living in, and, like, uh, and the septic tank backed up. No. And the person that we were renting the house from didn't want to like have the carpets replaced or anything, so we are like, ah, forget it, we're out. Oh my so gosh. we left and moved back in with my parents for a little bit to figure stuff out, and then... A little bit of negligence, yeah. my goodness. Yeah, it was in, in the heat of Atlanta, that yeah, sounds was, like horrific. It was, yeah, it was a bad situation. <laughs> yes. So we just, uh, she said, if you want to go to school, that's fine, you know. Okay. Way I, I didn't have to get a job immediately and start, you know. So quit my job, went to culinary school, and stayed at my parents until I was done. Learn a new trade. Did you, how long did you go to school? What was the program? So the program then was only, I think, a year and a half or, or about a year and okay. then three months of externship. And school is a good time, especially you're back home living with your folks. Are they prodding you to make what you're learning at home? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Of course. And, you know, you, you, know, you come home with all these new great recipes and ideas and you're like, oh, I'm going to make this at home and see how it goes. And Yeah. You know, you have all these um, preconceptions of, oh, you can't use you can't use Hellman's mayonnaise anymore. Let me make the mayonnaise, you know, <laughs> that type of stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. And <laughs> Does that retain today? No, no, <laughs> definitely buy Hellman's mayonnaise still for the for the job. Uh, yeah, some of this stuff, you know, you, you like I said, you have these these preconceived notions of, oh, you can't even, you know, you can't buy even spice blends. You can buy spice blends. That's yeah, fine. yeah. So, so it, I'm. What happens, like, you know, you're in culinary school, you have to do externship. Mm-hmm. I keep getting it. Is it extern or inter- internship? I so, forget what they, how they label it. I, that was labeled an externship. I guess the biggest difference is an internship can be unpaid, but through Le Cordon oh, yeah. Bleu, you had to have a paid externship. Unless yeah. it was some huge name uh, yeah. restaurant, and like then a, they would allow you to do it without like being Like a stage, paid. right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, otherwise, everyone is looking for the Le Cordon Bleu student to come work for free. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So is so that's the first job you get in a restaurant, which is where? So my cousin's actually a chef. He went to Le Cordon Bleu in Miami uh, years before that. Okay. And he's a chef down in the Florida Keys at a resort. That's, that's so, a good, yeah, good place said, to be. I, I was always, he actually lives here too, and okay. I work with him. You've probably seen him at, at my work every once in a while. Okay. He's a bigger dude with a big beard. All right. Uh huh. So he he calls and says, I got a place. You can come down here and work, and you, you know, you can stay in the, when you're next turn down there, you can stay in the on the property, and you, they just take a couple hundred bucks out a month, and that's it. So I said, okay. Went down there. Um, I, Really enjoyed working at that resort. Yeah. It was a fun resort. I worked at, um, during the externship, the executive chef at the time had me do basically all three. So I worked at, the first month I was there, I worked at a, um, like a fast casual restaurant. Okay. At night. And then- What was the name of it? uh, Tom's Heart. Well, the the resort was Hawks K Resort. Okay. Uh, And- I don't know if you're familiar with the Florida Keys, but everything there. That's why I'm asking. I'm yeah. just because it's small enough. Maybe it'll ring a bell. Yeah, it was on. Uh, it was one of the big resorts, and it was on mile marker 62 or 61, and okay. that's how they mark everything down there. Right. So <laughs> yeah, so it was basically halfway between the mainland of Florida and Key West. Yeah, I think that's a little further out than I. We were down all the way by like one, two, three, four mile marker. Yeah. So you were down in Key West. Yeah. 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 That was about an hour south of where I was staying. Okay. So we lived in Marathon, which is right before the, the Seven Mile Bridge, the big, long bridge. Um, 
So that's where we, we lived at and then worked at Hawks game. So coming from Atlanta, we, I mean, I, I, my question for you is doing an externship in, in the Keys. What was that transition like? Was it, did, was it hard to focus on your job at hand being in like a different, uh, you know, not only state, but you've got the ocean around you, completely different environment? I, I or, think... I think if I was younger, it probably would have been, but I think I was 28 or 29 when I did that. So you're ready to focus. So I was ready to really focus and, and, and learn on-job experience because I didn't work at all during culinary school. Yeah. So I had no idea what to expect. Okay. Yeah. You know, you hear your teachers and your professors and your chefs all tell you, you know, you have no life. You're just going to work. That's it. So I was ready for that. Okay. That's great. I mean, that's great because it could have gone a different direction, yeah. especially in the Keys. Yes. <laughs> that's a, a place where I'm sure all kinds of crazy things happen. Yeah. There's not much there except for bars. That's There's not it. much there except for bars. Um, did How long did you stay down there? Just for the externship? So I did the externship, and then I, I went back to Atlanta for about a month, and I, I kind of drug my feet looking for a job. Um, didn't really get out there and look too hard. And then... The, the executive chef said, if you want a job here, come back. So I went back to Hawkscay Resort. Okay. All right. So I was there for another year and a half or so before we moved to Texas. Okay. And at that time, did you have the uh, your girlfriend or wife at the time? No. No. no okay. So. I had, I had nothing. It was nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easy yeah. transition to keep moving around. Yeah, absolutely. So you're learning a lot. You learn a lot in culinary school. What's your take first time in a restaurant? Were, was it something that you took to? Um, I loved it yeah. immediately. Part of the thing was though, one of the guys that worked next to me knew I was new and he was older and he'd been in the industry a long time and he was, he was a really good line cook. Yeah. He was a saute cook and he would do certain things for me that I didn't know were necessarily my job. So he, you know, he was like taking care of you in a yeah, way. Yeah. You didn't, did you even know it? Not really. So that, that can be not good for you. It, it, yeah, it was not because then some other guy came over, you know, it was his days off or whatever, and I was working. Yeah. And he's like, you need to be doing this, that, and this. And I'm like, okay, I don't even know what you're talking about. And so yeah. it was just you know, a little things on the line where he would pull his own plates and sauce them real quick and put his, his entree in it. But I was in the middle, so I was the fry cook basically. So I was in the middle where I was supposed to be pulling plates, saucing, and then he would just cook the proteins and the veg and all that and put it on there. So... You know, the, the first night I worked with the other gentleman, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, it fell apart. Yeah. That might be, I mean, you said he was an older gentleman, and not not passing judgment on him, but he's an older guy. He's still working on a line, um, and he doesn't even see the importance of you having to know the whole job. Correct. That, that might be what separates, you know, somebody who stays on a line for a longer time and somebody who graduates to, you know, a chef de cuisine or a, a sous chef or something like that. Yeah. Um, so... So you're down there, that guy. But I mean, that's that's also learning experience, right? Yeah, as soon as you yeah. get thrown in the in the muck, there you kind of yeah. <laughs> you have to learn real quick. Yes, you do. And it was, you know, like I said, I loved it immediately. It was fun working on a line, and you know, the fast energy, pace, yeah, yeah, the energy, and and just having to go, go, go all the time. Right. So you, how long did you stay there? Like I said, about a year and a half. But I and then back to Atlanta. And then straight to here, Texas. Okay. And then I'm just curious when you found the, your, your woman and you guys started a family. <laughs> when I moved here to Austin, she was working at, uh, I started at Lake Way Resort and Spa. Okay. When we moved here, it was owned by the same people at the time. The people who owned Hawks K. Is Hulk's it the same chef over there who's been there for? No. Okay. Lake, Lake, Lake Way has changed I, umpteen times. Okay. I mean, even when I was, I was there for two years and we had three different executive chefs at the oh, time. Okay. So. All right. A lot of turnover. Um, but when I moved here, uh, the, the company that owned Hawks K Resort and Lakeway Resort at the time yeah. owned both of them. Right. And they owned a couple other little properties. Okay. But. So you kind of got to transfer almost. Basically, yeah. Yeah. It was under the same management company ownership, but they... And, and does your wife cook? No. Oh, She's she... A, she went to Johnson Wells for front of the house. Okay, so but you met her at the Lakeway. Yeah, she was a front of the house manager when I was working the line. And okay, the and then you guys had a little love affair and <laughs> started a family. Yeah, basically. Okay, all right. So you're sticking in restaurants. I mean, that's a little different, right? The the Lakeway. Yeah. So when I was at Hawks K, I did all of it really. I did 
banquets. Um, I worked, the only one I didn't do, they had a fine dining restaurant there. Yeah. I never really worked there. I mean, I was kind of around it because it was in, out of the main kitchen. Right. So I worked at a different outlet where we did lunch and it was, that was probably the best experience for me there. Okay. Because it was, uh, we would do seven to 800 covers in like a three hour period and it was wow. all a minute cooking and there was only five of us on the line. So it was. That's intense. Yes. It was very intense. Just constantly moving you know you get there at eight you open at 11 and if you're not ready you're just in deep trouble yeah sounds like yeah it. <laughs> sounds like especially if that old line cook doesn't show up yeah all well right. that was that was even a different outlet oh, okay. where that guy was at but yeah all right so you kind of you've got your feet wet in it and then you end up over with uh stefan or or, or stephanie <laughs> whoever <laughs> whichever you want to call it yeah uh um a new ownership came into uh Lake Lake Way. Oh yeah. Sometimes I even get them confused. Right. So they came in, and the way they ran it was just an executive chef and one sous chef. So I was a sous chef for the restaurant at at Lake Way, and my cousin was the uh, the banquet chef, the banquet sous chef, and then we had an executive chef, Jeff Axline, who I think is now in Tennessee. But um, so when all that came down, and they came in and they bought it, and and they let me go and kept Mike on, my okay. cousin. So. My wife and I both just started looking for jobs, and whoever got, you know, a good job that paid enough first was going to be the one to work because we just had my daughter, and she was young. And at that point, it's just more expensive to have two people work and put a child in daycare than it is just to have one person work. And Yeah, for the record, when people say children are expensive, they're not just talking about diapers. Yeah. They're talking about the price of daycare. It's uh, almost a rent check. Yeah, it's, yeah exactly. That was, it was it's, more for to put our two kids in daycare than it was... For our rent. You'd be lucky to pay less than 800 bucks. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So we decided that until they were old enough to where it was either, you know, kindergarten or at least pre-K where it was a little bit cheaper. Right. Uh, that just one person would work and the other would work part-time. So we both started smart, looking for jobs. Smart. Yeah. 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 Both started looking for jobs after I got uh, released. And the she landed a job first okay. as, a, as a manager at, I think the restaurant's even closed now. It was uh, a steakhouse downtown. I'll think of the name in a second, but she got a job as a front of house manager there. So I was just looking for part time. Okay. So uh, Lake Austin was looking for two days a week breakfast cook. So perfect. Right. Got it. And that was great. Yeah. It was really nice going in and just, you know, going from a sous chef at a restaurant at a hotel to where you're always, when you're a sous chef at a hotel, even if you're in just the restaurant, you're doing banquets, you're doing, you know, yeah, you're all the, over the place. The beach grill. Yeah. So. It's a nice change of pace. Yeah, going just and breakfast. I mean, breakfast can be a cakewalk. Yes, yeah, yeah, it can be for sure. Yeah, and so it was. It was dream come true, basically. So curious, what time did you have to get in there to do breakfast? Six, six a.m. That's mm-hmm. not bad. And mm-hmm. then you're out pretty relatively yeah, early. Six to two. Yeah, that's that was, great. That was it. Um, so it was nice going in there and just punching the clock, doing your job, and going home. It was a nice little breather yeah. after a few years of doing that, and. Um, Let's see. So the other sous chef at the time was was out the door pretty much. His foot was out the door. So then I picked up that position there at the uh, at Lake Lake Austin. Oh, okay, yeah. great. So there was at the time there was an AM and PM sous chef. So uh, hold, let me backtrack just a second. So you pick that job up, but your wife has got this job already downtown. Oh, so that closed. Did it close? No, while it she didn't was close working? while she was working there. No, so she was working there and she had that job, and then my parents moved here. So it was, it was. Oh, great! Yeah, so that that all kind of fell into place. Where it was like, oh, okay, so now someone can help watch the kids, and and we can both get full time jobs and yeah, you know, be better off. Okay, all right. So and they were also getting older, so it was easier to get them into the. Uh, my son, I think, was just about to start kindergarten. Okay, so so you um, were sous chef over at the. Resort and spa, mm-hmm. and how was that um, in comparison to what you, you know? What had led you, what you've done previous in your career? Um, it was different because there it was it was there's not much staff. So breakfast you did by yourself. There was not much, all right. Yeah, so breakfast I did by myself at, at, at Lake Austin, and there would be up to seventy two people there. So you're cooking all of a new three hour breakfast, seven to ten. Uh, so it's a it, could get hectic. What are the uh, what's some tricky things that were on that menu there <laughs> for that breakfast? Specifically? There was some 
poached egg taco okay. that was really, and you know, you had sliced avocado on there and like pico and a few other, th- I can't even remember everything that was on it, but you know, it was just poaching eggs while trying to make omelets for other people while yeah. trying to, you know, make, you know. Oh, that's, yeah, alone. Yeah. Yeah. So it be, it just became, you, that one could put you in the weeds pretty quick if you had to do that. Yeah. And then I'm sure it just randomly pops up and then you turn around and the water's gone. Yeah, water's gone <laughs> or, you know. Too yeah. much salt, you know, something. Yeah. So it was, it, that was the only tricky part. But um, there was also like a, a little breakfast buffet that we put out every morning. So it had a few things on it. So sometimes people would just get that and then be it's done. like if I make this look good enough. Exactly. No exactly. one's going to order anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Kind of like a hot bar in a way. Yeah. yeah we had like oatmeal on there. Um, okay. All right. Oatmeal, a few other things, and then like a really nice looking like berries and fruit and yogurt and. It's so beautiful out there. Yeah. It's, uh, have you like gone there and for your leisure? Pro- no, it's... no, I never did make it there just to, to go for my leisure. And, you know, a few times they offered for us to stay there when it was supposed to ice. Okay. And I had the kids at the time. So it was like, I, I got to go home. I got to make, cause I was the one that, um, usually got them up in the morning before I went to work. Yeah. So I've never been there, but I, I mean, I've been there, Yeah. but I've not like, um, partake in what it's what it's supposed to be like when you go there yeah yeah but um when people ask you know where's a good place to get away i'm like just going there and walking through the property is like a you feel like you've gotten away for a bit yeah it's all quiet (laughs) it's funny you say that because we i even had a health inspector so we had um there was the uh okay now i can't remember the name there was an outlet up at the actual spa yeah where they did their lunches and everything uh for the the just a day spa guest that would come in just to get their hair done or a massage or whatever. Sure. And there's a restaurant up there. Um, and the, the, the health inspector would have me walk her all through the property before she went up there. So we'd have to walk all the way around to the, through the nice gardens. There's yeah. a quick, there's a much quicker way just up through, you know, right. Like where the, where the maintenance went, took their trucks to get stuff into rooms and out of rooms. But right. she wanted to walk the whole long way oh, around. Yeah. And- <laughs> yeah. Nice little break. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's very nice. So, and now you're in the, so catering, Mm -hmm. right? So that led you there. Yep. So we had a general manager I did not get along with too well. At the, uh, resort? At the, at the resort. Um, just didn't really see eye to eye with that person. Sure. And. Happens, right? Yeah. So this is, you know, it was a pretty well. Fought out sign, I guess you could say, but I got a text message from my father in law saying that uh, he knew somebody that was looking, you know, uh, through another friend of his, somebody was looking for an executive chef at, at the Vanilla Orchid. Okay. And I looked at it and I, you know, I said, okay, uh, this looks kind of cool. And I was like, but, I, you know, I'm at Lake Austin Spa Resort. It's a pretty well renowned resort. I said, uh, maybe, maybe not. And then I got a text message from Safan saying, because that person, the general manager, was just temporary. We had someone leave. She was just supposed to be in there temporary. And then uh, he texted me literally about 10 minutes after I got that one for the job and said, she took a full-time position. She's going to be here from now on. And I said, okay, well, that's the biggest sign I'll ever get. So I immediately text my father-in-law and said, all right, you know, or, or Vanilla Orchid, I should say. Yeah. I said, yeah. Right, I'd like to come in for an interview and see how this goes. Yeah, it's funny how that happens. Yeah, I mean, it was, if that's not a clear sign of, hey, <laughs> was uh, Chef Stefan telling you that uh, because he knew you guys had a little, uh, you know, animosity, I guess is the word? Yeah, uh, probably in a way, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it was, it was still all up in the air, and I guess there was meetings that day where it was kind of just like, okay, well, now she's going to stay on. Okay. So, And how do you feel now that you've been there for three-plus years? And I, I love it. I was at corporate uh, hotels... Lake Austin isn't really so corporate. They're owned by uh, just some people that had some, some oil money and bought a resort. They did a really good job with it. Yeah. Um, but going from complete corporate to, you know, mom and pop, like it's owned by Ivan Mills. And uh, so Molly started the company 10 years ago. And just going to something where it's just a husband and wife own a company and running it is just... Nothing You're, much better than that. You like it. I love it. Great. Yeah, I see a lot of guys who, um, once they work for some something like that, whether it's catering or a restaurant, 
they always gravitate towards another uh, yeah. you know, mom and pop place. Yeah. I know a couple of people who that's just what they do. They won't, they, they won't, they feel like they'll sell out if they go somewhere corporate. Yeah. And I mean, it has its advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. I don't, I don't get the, the whole sell out how you feel like that. I mean, a job is a job and if it's got benefits, but yes. So, but maybe go and what's so great. What's the difference? So at a lot of these hotels, you know, they, they tell you, you need to write a menu. So right. you write a menu and then 15 people have to look at it before they say yes or no. Okay. And um, what it comes down to is, is just a lot of bureaucracy. So they're looking at it, and they're, they've never been a chef. They don't know. So that's they're just... The, that's like the, the ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Like you've got somebody who like wants, you know, they have no thought process behind why they want or don't want something on there. Exactly. But they're criticizing what you put together. Yep. <laughs> and it makes it harder. And, you know, then, then you deal with your food and beverage director and then all these other things that get involved, whereas here... Where I'm at, you know, the Vanilla Orchid, it's just, I talk to Ivan and either it happens or it doesn't. And it's yeah. it's nice knowing the thought process behind it because he'll even tell you, hey, listen, I don't think we should do this because X, Y, Z. Right. Whereas, you know, these hotels, it, you've probably never even seen the person that's telling you no. Yeah. Because um, they might not might even be anywhere near you. They're, they might own the company from, you know, Dallas and sure. tell you how it's going. That's... Uh no, that makes a lot of sense. Just that fact alone. Yeah. Is, is there any other reasons that like factor in um, to like the big, you know, kind of corporate setting and what makes mom and pop a little nicer? Your voice being heard. Yeah. So, you know, you can say, hey, listen, I think this is going to help if we do this, whatever the case may be. And, you know, your owner's right there, your general manager's right there, and like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And then you see it happen Yeah. Uh, compared to, again, you know, where there's a chain of command where, you know, you tell your boss, and they have to tell their boss, and they have to tell, you know. Right. And it becomes a bit more of a, a watered-down process. Right. And on the flip side of it, you know, when you go from a corporate situation, a lot of times you're set up with, you know, proper benefits and proper vacation time and... What, what have you, right? There's all a whole uh, slew of things that you can benefit from. Exactly. It's like there's stability. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go to the mom and pop route. Like I'm at, uh, with a mom and pop. Yeah. You know, and it's like I, I don't have vacation set up properly. Yeah. And, the, you know, I don't have insurance set up properly. But how do, I mean, I guess you don't need to go into details about, well, I guess you could if you wanted to. But uh, how's that set up there? Okay. Uh, we don't have benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you did, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Of course, at the hotels, they have so benefits. So that's one trade-off. That's one trade-off. Uh, luckily, my wife has a good job now. She actually got out of the industry completely. She's working for a construction company doing what? contracting. Yes. Golf clap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she was in the industry a long time, and she got out. And so she's got benefits. And cool. I'm oh, just well, on hers. No, that's, uh, that's yeah. a good balance. Um, yeah, that's always something to consider. But... It's it's almost like even if the, your wife wasn't involved here, and if you're going to choose one or the other, I would still go mom it, pop. Yeah, because yeah, you have like the day to day peace of mind. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so and yeah. I'm sure there's other things. Anything off the top of your head that you can think of? Could just compare contrast. You know, mom and pop. Uh, you know, big corporate spots. Um, just a few things that I mentioned. Really, I mean, it's yeah. just yeah. it's so much easier. Just Being finishing. able to, you know, talk to everyone around you and, and, and know that, I mean, our whole company is right in that little office in Burnett. That yeah. Everybody that's full-time is there. Yeah. So, you know, there's never kind of a not crossing of paths and everybody's ideas can get heard. Definitely. Um, no, that's great. So you guys are busy. This The uh, way catering goes, typically there's like ups and downs. But mm -hmm. when it's more corporate, does it stay pretty steady? No. Okay. At, at all the hotels I worked at, there was, there was fluctuation, especially the one in the Florida Keys, uh, and they did it very smart there. They used a lot of um, work visa people. So they the, the visas that these people had, a lot of them were Jamaican. In fact, 60% of the staff there was Jamaican. Wow. So they were only allowed to work, um, I think it was six months at a time at one place. Mm -hmm. So they would work the six busy months at that hotel. And then they would work three months up in Maine, or actually some came here to Austin uh, when, it, when it was the other, the opposite busy season. Yeah, yeah. So that worked out really well because then, you know, 60% of your staff that doesn't need to be there is gone. Right, yeah. 
So no, that is smart. And what do you guys do when it gets slow? Um, <laughs> we just usually people just maybe pick up like a small second job or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Or uh, to be honest with you, this is very common though for catering. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, we haven't like usually we we call it the J months. So January. June, July. Oh, okay. Are typically the slow months. Right. And this January, you know, we were we were gearing up for it. We actually like another good reason to work for mom and pop places, we close December twenty second through basically the first of the year, first or second of the year. That's nice. Um, because not many people do catering for Christmas. Yeah. Like on Christmas. You know, we'll do all the Christmas tons of Christmas parties before, but once the twenty 20- First, 20th, once the kids get out of school, yeah, most people go on vacation. They're not looking for catering to come to their house oh, yeah. and cook no, anything or, you know, their events. You know, most of the, the corporate events, they're already done. They're yeah, gone. that's beautiful. Yeah. So, you know, we close. We're done. Right. Close up shop for a few days, get everybody a good rest because it was insanely busy the month before that or two months, really. And... Uh, January is usually pretty slow, so we wrote this big, giant list on a whiteboard of everything we needed to get done in January. That way, people could get hours, and we could get you know everything back in ship shop, you know, tip top shape. Right, right. It was busy. We didn't have time to do. I think two things got crossed off the list. Oh wow! Since then, and I mean, we have just been. Hey, you know, yeah, right. not, it, a, not a bad problem. Not a bad problem to have at all. Right. So we're just keep trucking along like that and it's it's very nice. What do you think? You think that may have to do with the the way Austin's growing or just kind of a, a fluke that you know January got filled up like that? No, we um Ivan like I said I really like working for this man. He he has come up with some great ideas and right now like there's a big trend in catering of these these third party companies coming up. Okay. And what they do is they go to the, all these corporate places and they say, "Hey, you just tell us how many people you need, and we're going to find catering for you. Um, and we got on several of these. There's Cater to Me, uh, Zero Cater, uh, a few other ones. I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. Um, and we, they, they just book with us. Nice. And, and it helps keep the lights on. It helps keep people moving. Uh, helps give people hours. Yeah. And it, it, it definitely kept us afloat. Uh, last year during the slow months and this year so far. Oh, that's cool. So, um, yeah, that's good. I mean, it's like a, it's a new day. We could be way more connected. It yeah. sounds like he's taking advantage of that. Yeah, and it and it's like I said, it's this new kind of trend in catering to where they just want it dropped off. They don't want the white glove ten servers standing around filling up goblets. Yeah, they want. They don't care if it comes in the the metal foil pans. I mean, we try to make it nicer. Right, yeah. But, you know. I wonder what that is, what the transition is for. I I think it's just because they want to feed their people. um, Because there's been a lot, you know, a lot of places have proven that if you, first off, if you just provide a meal a week, people tend to want to work there more. Also, keeps people in the office. You know, you get um, people leave for breaks. And then they kind of like there's like a a disconnect. So right. they, they leave, they walk out the door, they're not at work for an hour, they go out to lunch, you know, wherever they go. Yeah. And they come back and they have to kind of reset. Whereas if you stay in the office the whole time, you tend to be a little bit more productive because you stay in that office mindset. I'm sure you're familiar with like the, the Facebook properties at the domain and at downtown mm-hmm. and Google. They all have, you know, uh, I guess it's a third-party catering company that's in the, but they're there all, they're set up shop there. Yep. And yep. Every employee break, lunchtime, you know, fresh, fresh juice and mm-hmm. whatever is on the menu that day. It's, yeah, that's very appealing, but it's probably the same mindset. Just keep them here, keep yeah. them focused. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's 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 definitely helped our business because we got on board with a few of these. You know, they we either contacted them or they contacted us, and we just started a business relationship, and it's worked out pretty well. Yeah, that's great. So you're you have a daughter, you said. Do you have another child? I have a daughter and son. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so I have a ten year old son, and uh, she's about to be eight this month. Daughter. Okay. And have they picked up the any any cooking um, <laughs> interests? My daughter a little bit. My son, he actually made pancakes yesterday, so I didn't get to, I didn't get to try them. No, um, no, I was at work in the oh, morning, okay. but he made them yesterday. I guess my wife printed out a recipe for him, and he made them. But he confused oh. tablespoons with teaspoons. 
and eh. It, eh, then he put salt in instead of oh, something else. Well, so it was supposed to be a teaspoon of salt, and he put or three teaspoons of salt or something like that, and he put in three tablespoons. So I guess my wife said they were not <laughs> they were not that great. Um, I have made a similar mistake with a pancake batter um, with the salt instead of sugar. <laughs> oh once. yeah, that yeah. was pretty. They actually went out. So oh. it, it was not a pretty situation. Yeah. <laughs> I think every cook has been there at some point in time where either I've definitely made a dessert before and I didn't put the sugar in at all. And then, you know, you, you do it, you bake it, you get it all ready, and then you taste Savory. it. You're like, all right, let me do this again. Yeah, yeah, so. definitely. <laughs> so your son, that's great, though. He's making pancakes. I mean, oh, yeah. Especially on his own, right? Yeah, all on his own. He asked to do it and then did it. Uh, my daughter likes to, to cut things. We just give her a little butter knife or something. She'll cut strawberries. Yeah, it's funny. My mine is five, and she. It's probably what I do. For, yes, but yeah. she she um, I she's got like plastic ones, but she is always with the butter knife. <laughs> she's you know I've taught her how to hold it, and yeah, it's it's kind of scary to watch sometimes because oh, yeah. I'm like, just don't pick up a sharp one. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're on the edge of your seat. Um, but you know you gotta gotta teach them sometimes. Oh yeah. So, but you know they're what do they think? Dad's a chef. Yeah, they they like to say it, I think. Um, they like the idea of it. Yeah, yeah. My daughter, one time, she was asked, um, she went to church with my wife, and she was asked, uh, what's daddy, you know, I was at work that day or something. She's like, well, what's daddy do for a living? He goes, she says, burns himself. Because <laughs> I always have <laughs> little battle burns, scars. Yeah, burns yeah. on my arm or on my hand or something. She, that's what she thought I did. <laughs> he burns himself. Oh, goodness. <laughs> See, that's the kind of thing that's it's funny, and then you, like, if, if they're in a daycare or something... They'll, they'll say that. Yep. And it ends up sounding horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? What? Yeah, we need yeah. to call, uh, you know, whatever. CPS, yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> so um, you guys are out to eat. Just take that scenario. When you get served food, do you have that? Uh, I mean, most of us do. But, like, how do you, do you depict it or you just kind of roll with it? I usually just roll with it. Um, if there's something wrong, do you tell, tell anybody or no, just eat it? I just eat it. I, I'm not a picky person, and, you know, it's funny that you mention that because when my wife and I go out to eat... Oh, she, she the opposite? She, yeah. Well, <laughs> she she always wants to change it first off. I right. always want, ah, yeah, can I get this with, with that and oh, yeah. change it? And she always slips in the conversation with the server that she was the front of the house manager at some point in time. <laughs> and I never ever bring up the fact that, uh, you know, I'm an executive chef. I, I just, yeah. I just, it's not me. I never go in there and ever say anything about me being a chef. Yeah. I might, the, the biggest thing we'll do is if, if something happens service wise or food wise, probably just won't go back. Right. Not going to bother writing a review anywhere or anything like oh, that. Oh no, just, no. I'm that type too, where if I get served something completely different than what I ordered, I typically, I'm like, Okay, well, we'll just eat this. Maybe this will be good. <laughs> Maybe it'll be good. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm very similar to, I don't tell anybody about, you know, the, if anything that has to do with, you know, restaurants or whatever, just kind of eat the food. Yep. But um, that's funny that she's kind of the, uh, oh, it, yeah. it may be because she's out of the game that she no. brings it up. Nope. No, she's always been that <laughs> she's way. She's always been that way. She really I likes to. I sympathize with you yeah, and yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny too, because somehow uh, a lot of times we will we will get terrible service and it's just like. I know. It seems just, like I would just get that Yeah, too. it's just a bad luck. It's, you know, they came out. I remember one time we went to just one of those, uh, what is the name of that place? It's uh, the brewery, uh, BJ's, BJ's Brew House. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like a it's chain a, restaurant. It's a chain, yeah. But they have decent food, and the kids like it because they have a lot of, like, a big kid's menu, and they get a free dessert at the end. So they love it. So we went there, and all of, I went with, I think my parents were with us, and all of us got the food, and the kids didn't. I'm like, hey, you know, we told yeah. you you could have brought the kids' food out whenever it's ready. Like, oh, okay, let me go check. And, you know, server comes back and says, oh, they didn't. They didn't, or the the food runner came and said it wasn't on the ticket. And then the server comes back and says, <clears throat> oh, the kitchen forgot to make it. Oh. Um, you know, being a chef, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Don't just immediately blame the kitchen for that. <laughs> right, right. I hear that a lot. I've seen it a lot. Oh, and, yeah. You know, so. No, I, I um, isn't that funny? Yeah. It's, it's almost like the luck of the draw. Yep. Because you're in the industry, something like that's more often to happen to you. It, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, Never somebody's testing serving. you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so you said BJ's. Um, so I guess I, I want to ask you two questions about where you'd like to eat because you have the family. Yes. So first, where do you go as a family if you guys go out to eat? Sadly, I never like to admit this too much. Chick-fil-A. My family loves 
Chick-fil-A. Not, nothing, I mean, we're, we're Chewy's. Like <laughs> Chewy's, I like Chewy's too. We, they just built the Chewy's up by us, but it's always got an hour wait. Oh, really? Yeah. You got to go. I don't know what time. You, I, I, we like strategically plan the Chewy's. Uh, I'm like, that's a good idea. It's five o'clock. We are going now or never. <laughs> it's like, if it's 515, we're not going. Yeah. You're not going to make it. Yeah. 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 And, um, I, I'm a very simple, simple person. So, I mean, I like to go to nice restaurants and get good food. But my wife is not very adventurous, so a lot of times that doesn't work out. I'll usually have to go either occasionally with her or sometimes just with, with like, a friends or a cousin or something. So Chick-fil-A with the family. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the, the go-to. That's their, that is their go-to. That's the go-to. But you, let's say, for kids or with the grandparents, you and your wife, you twist around, she says, fine, I'll go wherever you want to go. <laughs> Do you have a couple spots maybe that are like, I, I'm referring to them as hidden gems. Hidden gems? Chef Ma- Matthew Frederick, oh, where, where are they? There is this place called Oast House. And yeah, it's actually right. 620. Yep, yep. That's actually right. My parents live in that apartment complex right next to that. Okay. So when we do get it, we'll go drop them off and then go there for dinner. So the owner owns the district out here. On oh, really? Yeah, and that's very good. I've oh. not had the Oast House, but if it's anything like the district. Yeah, it, that's a great little place. The food's really good. Uh, I don't think I've ever, well, typically when we drop the kids off, it's early, so we'll go to an early dinner. Right. We're like the 65-year-old people getting the early bird special. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we go in there, and, and there's usually not too much of a wait or anything. And yeah, that's nice, good. Nice, quiet spot, good food. Nice ambiance. They oh, have because kind of you're the, out in that that area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anywhere else like Cedar Park? Do you say you're in Cedar Park? I'm in Cedar Park. Yeah. So Cedar Park is growing. It is. It's growing a lot. And there's some there's some decent spots out there. We haven't been eating out too much uh, in the last few months. Yeah. But uh, I'm trying to think of where. But this is your. This there's is a fantasy right now. Yeah. You're, so there's this also this Mexican restaurant and it, it's um like an interior Mexican so it's not the chimichangas and all that and I. I'd have to look it up because I don't remember the name because it's in like a shopping center on like yeah. the corner right so by your house. And somebody, I think uh, Joseph Sukendra uh, lives out in that area and he mentioned somewhere in Cedar Park that's the same. He described it the same way. Yeah. But he said the name of it. Um, now I'm curious about what it yeah. was. I'd have, to, I'd have to look it up because I don't remember it all. And I threw around the typical, what about El Monumento or Monument Cafe? And, and it's sort of just... Those, uh, that's okay. My wife really likes that. She's a celiac, so we'll go out there every once in a while. But that's actually way out. Uh, that's pretty far from us. Okay. We're like right right at the beginning of Cedar Park. So basically... They opened a Mandola's out there. That's good for mm-hmm. the kids. Oh, yeah. 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 We yeah love that place. They go get dessert there every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, the dinners are good, but it's a line. I mean, that place is always slammed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What about the Rotten Bunch? Oh, my wife and I have been there a few times. She actually enjoys that restaurant. Okay, cool. That's a, that, thank you for mentioning that. That's a good one. Okay, good. Uh, I'm, I'm interested. I haven't been there, but I met the, met the chef real quickly, mm-hmm. and he seems like the exact type of chef who's making good food. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's fantastic food there. We've been there, I think my wife and I have been there three times now, and every time we've gone, it's been just okay. really good. Okay, so you guys and do I, you like know, that. Yeah, don't get the same thing every time, so. Nice. So Cedar Park, any, any others that you want to throw out there? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah. So you are at, you know, v- Vanilla Orchid, any future, like, things that, on the horizon? or I mean, because as a chef, you're always kind of thinking, but you've also got a family. Yeah. And that kind of, I mean, you got be, kids to think about. Yeah. To be honest with you, I really like it there, and it's growing so much that I think we could really expand and, and just kind of, I'd like to stay there for a bit and see where it so goes. So do your, does your mind start racing about expanding with them? Do you have ideas? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. any that you want to <laughs> share? Is it not, I mean, I mean, nothing's concrete, but. No, uh, and we've been looking into. Like different um, properties or. We've been looking into doing what you were talking about. You know how Google has like the, the Facebook and all yeah. of them have the, the. Um, what do they call it? Like, like a kind of just a, a cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been looking into maybe For like getting a tech some buildings. Or yeah, um, there's a lot coming. Here. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. I know a few uh, who. I mean, the domain area. Yep. There's a lot of stuff going up out there. Yeah, and we actually did a a few things where um, a large alcohol company. I don't know how much I can talk about, but a large alcohol company is actually putting a farm in. And putting in a restaurant in their, um, in their factory, oh, yeah. and we went and did a tasting with them, and you know, kind of got us the bug, like, oh wow, you know, this could, this could be something. And then we did another one for a, a medical company, 
and you know it came <clears throat> we didn't get either one of them but you know part of it was they told us we were too fancy because we went a little bit too far so we're Ivan and I have kind of dialed it down to where it's more just kind of regular Joe food, uh, if you will. Burgers and pizza. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) stuff like that, just kind of chicken, burgers, pizza, whatever the case may be, Um, meatloaf even, stuff like that, to where we think we can kind of pitch it to people. So that's that's one of the next things that's on the horizon. We have... I think you guys might do well with that, yeah. considering how things are accelerating around mm-hmm. here. And the trend and everything. I mean, it seems to be that would be the next place to go. And we, uh, when I started there, we kind of just moved into the kitchen we're in now. We were in a commissary kitchen before. And, you know. Do you way, still have it or just the, No, no, no. It was a shared, you know, it was just a shared kitchen oh, where yeah, we like rented. With like food trucks. Yeah, we stuff. rented like four hours or whatever the block was. I don't remember how long it was. But right, yeah. I wasn't there at the time. And so they... Actually, let me start at the beginning, so this way it makes a little more sense. So Molly, when she started, she was working at Hudson on the Bend. Okay. And she was using the owner. The owner lives pretty much like right across the street, and he has like a commercial kitchen over there. So she was kind of using that to start it all out, Uh, and I guess her sister's kitchen. And so she was kind of just bouncing back and forth and using little kitchens, and then it became big enough to where she, you know, rented a commissary kitchen, hired some people. And then it became big enough to where they rented that that spot on Burnett Road. So now we're there and we are almost outgrowing that to the point where I have to space my ordering out because I don't have enough room in the walk-in to fit mm. everything. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's becoming tricky on, on what to do, the, you know, the next steps are. Uh, yeah, yeah. We also started, when I started there, we used Molly's, um, she had a Ford Escape and we called it the White Raven. <laughs> and that was used for all of our events. We'd pack it up and go and... You know, we outgrew that real quick and needed a van. So we got one van. And then this past year, we even got a second van. And now we're still using these two vans and having to rent a third van. So, oh, wow. I mean, it's uh, it's yeah. growing a lot. A lot of times people would take their own cars before. A lot of Most of the chefs that worked there had uh, SUV, little SUVs that they could pretty much pack an event in. Right, yeah. But now we get these ones where it's, you know, 250, 350, you know, 100 people. So yeah, it doesn't really fit in a car too well. Wow, yeah. I wonder what the next step will be. I know. We're we're all excited and we're we're trying to get there and figure it out and you know this we've got some some sales staff that's really hungry that really likes to push and and see how much we can do and I'm always telling them like let's stress test the kitchen. Let's see let's see how much we can handle before it breaks. So um so you're I mean obviously you guys have to appeal like you were just saying. We're you know, keep it down to like meatloaf or something. But mm-hmm. Molly Hudson on the bend, they do a lot of game, right? Yes, there is. There's, Did that come over, trickle into the... Did she attempt that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. We still have... I mean, there's things... We have sandwiches on the menu that, honestly, not many people order, but it's on there. Like what, um, venison or something? Like pickled tongue, uh, stuff Ooh. like that. Yeah, so it, it it goes up. Oh, so she did. She, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. There's is some, that a common theme in catering or... No. Okay. Uh, it depends on how adventurous people are. Uh, the first party I did, actually, for them as like a stage was venison. So they wanted chicken okay. fried venison. Chicken. So we do we do a little bit. I just did a party recently with antelope. I had it was a small actually it was only two people, but they wanted antelope and all that type of stuff. So I had to to source that out. Okay, interesting. So are you a fan of like the game or cooking with game? Yeah, absolutely. What about have you been to the Wild Kitchen and Bar yet? I have not. No. Okay, but you've heard of it. Mm-hmm. I think they were looking for an exec chef. Um, the chef there left. Um, I don't know what the reason was, but what? Where else? I mean, because this—that's like a subject that doesn't. I had thought that Wild was like one of the only places in Hudson on the Bend, but are there more? Uh, Daidui sells a lot of it. Okay. I don't know how much they actually cook there, I love but that's that actually place. that's actually where I got the the antelope from, and the, or I think it was antelope uh, at the time. That's where I so just nice. called them up and I yeah. need some backstrap. I'm like, yeah, sure, get it to you tomorrow. Yeah, they're great. So, do you go there and pick it up? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you know anyone up there? Our bartender actually works there. We have uh, we do a lot of bar services in Charlotte. Uh, she's a bartender for Die Dewey. Okay. Bartends for us as well on the side. Yeah. Kind of when we have big bars and stuff. So nice. Yeah, I like that. Have you heard that we were talking about it yesterday? Uh, Mickle Mickle Wait or Wait Mickle something on mm. the east side? No. No, I haven't. Heard you might about that. might need to check that out too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you so? I mean, this is a. Uh, a, a little different, but like, what about the barbecue? Like the, uh, you know, Franklin's or 
this Valentina's is over here. That's all far from you, but Cedar yeah. Park has got some. What what is the name? Of, uh, no, Big Cat. Did that close recently? Big Cat Barbecue. I don't know. No, I never heard of that one. Oh, okay, barbecue fan of that. To be honest with you, I had Coopers out in um, was, out in Burnet. Okay, and that was probably the best barbecue I've ever had. All right, so that was fantastic. I actually think Rudy's is pretty good barbecue. Yeah, there's I nothing. Think, yeah, it was when people put something together and set some specific standards to follow. A lot of times, that's yeah, yeah. For, I, I, if if I get barbecue, it's probably going to be Rudy's because it's you know there are several locations it's close and it's always going to be the same no matter where you go. I have uh, the the Ford and the Ford dealership. There's a Rudy's right next door, and whenever I go there, they're like, "Well, it's going to be three hours," and I'm like, "Okay, barbecue it is." <laughs> right. So yep. I, I like when I purchased the truck. I strategically was like thinking about. It. I was yeah. like, "Well." This could work. Yeah. <laughs> we could have a good relationship here. So, so speaking of the industry like that we're in right now and you see the growth happening, and I know it's a little different, the catering side of things, but and you, you kind of lay low when you go out to eat, but is there anything like common trends you see happening right now that you either love or maybe hate? I mean, of course, I like the, like the farm-to-table movement. I think that's a, that's a great thing. I, I have some issues with it because it's really hard to do like a ton of people farm to table. Yeah. Um, and it depends on, you know, that's why God made Cisco. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it depends on, on, on how they're saying they're doing it. You know, you hear farm to table and if they're feeding 200 people a night, there's just no yeah. way you're really doing true kind of farm to table. You're, right. you're, you're well, supplementing just, with something at some point in time. Sure. Yeah. So, so, so that's like a, almost like a love-hate thing. Yes. Yeah. So, so it goes both ways. Yep. Do you guys do a lot of farm-to-table when you can? We do it when we can. We have, a, you know, when we get these smaller 20-person parties that want, you know, an elevated menu, right. we'll definitely yeah. get as much local stuff as we can and, and push that. Right. Um, what about in your cabinet and your fridge at home? Are you doing, how do you, how do you shop or cook? Uh, mostly H-E-B and... A lot of times just simple menus because the kids, they're not too much into the, the experimental stuff. Right. And uh, my daughter will try anything, and she'll take one bite and say, oh, that's great. And then by the time she finishes chewing and swallowing, she said, oh, I don't like that. Oh, yeah. So, that, But do you cook for your wife still? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you guys ever make anything nice, extravagant, or? Yeah. I mean, a couple, you know, a couple yeah. times a month we'll make a, like a nice kind of, I don't know steak meal or something like that or yeah. just something a little bit more uh a lot of times we'll do i'll make rice one night and then make fried rice with it a couple nights later oh yeah because so. you're a chef <laughs> yeah that's, how, <laughs> that's try, how your mind works yes, <laughs> try to keep it use it make a little extra one day to make it something else the next day yeah i mean you work you got the kids is there anything that you personally do like in your free time yes what is that i you know I'd like to say I make a hobby out of making hobbies. Yeah. Uh, I used to play a ton of disc golf. I haven't played in a long time, but I... Ever... Out here? So there's some good places. Oh, yeah. 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 Actually, Mary Moore Sea Rights right, right here. Okay. They yeah. had a great course there. Uh, there's a few up by me that are nice, but again, I just haven't haven't been out there in a while. But it's, that's something you... you that's enjoy. something I was really passionate about. Uh, I played for a long time. I was, in the, was actually a member in the PDGA, the okay. Professional Disc Golf Association. So wow. That was always fun. I went, you know, did some tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, I just haven't really got into it recently. Uh, I've always played video games. So I got a hobby what, of video what's games. What's the... Uh, is it like a PC or a PS4? Or? Uh, I play on Xbox, Xbox. And I have a PC, okay. too, that I play uh, every once in a while. But nothing too crazy on that. No, no PS4 with all those crazy releases they mm, have. No. I, you know, I was always a Halo person, so I was always an Xbox person. Okay. Um, but now I just have an Xbox just because, uh, you know, the, the people that you play online with, that's who so we've been online with still for play? a few years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm horrible about playing. I, I'll play. I'll get a game that I love, and I'll be able to play it all day one day. Yeah, and then I can never play it again. It was like a little honeymoon I have. <laughs> so I, I have a hard time buying games. Yes, yeah, and I I just play pretty much the same games all the time. Right now, it's uh, all those battle royale games. Okay. So, but the video games, and then I, I've had this like itch to start woodworking. I don't know if it's because I'm getting old. I'm almost you know. Make a cutting board, man. Yeah, yeah. Start with something. <laughs> Start with something. You could do some sayas for some knives or something. Yep, yep. I mean, yeah, sky's the limit with that. Exactly. And I, you know, just kind of got this itch. I went and got 
a couple of weeks ago, this guy had free pallets out. I was like, oh, let me, I'm, I'm going to pick all these pallets. I'm going to do something with them. Yeah. They're still sitting in the garage at the moment, but <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to start that hobby sooner than later. Man, I wish I could think of the name of it, but it's maybe it's called Woodcraft on 35. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been in there? I, I haven't been in it, but I know of it. Oh, you should just. I mean, you should just go on the way home and stop in there. <laughs> that place is so cool. If you yeah. have an itch, that will probably just be ignite a fire. Yeah. yeah, I'll probably just spend too much money getting trouble when I get home. It's so <laughs> cool in there, though. I had to go in for, I didn't even know that that place was there, and I had to go for something, some part for the the machine we use, and I was like, wow, it's like a playland, and I don't even <laughs> do anything with wood. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that would be interesting to get into. Yeah. I think it goes maybe hand in hand, like the crafts and, you know, chef. I mean, maybe. Yeah, graduate. kind of just like arty, artsy, use your hands to make it type thing, I guess. I don't know. Do you ever play the the games with your, your son or your daughter? Mm-hmm. Uh, my son's really into Fortnite. He's 10, loves that game. I'm not a huge fan. I'm like, uh, like a. What? He has. He has uh, uh, so. The Switch, or has he got the. No, he's got an Xbox. So a couple years ago, my family bought uh the xbox the newer fancier xbox one x for me yeah so i gave him my old one that i had and how'd you like the xbox one x out of curiosity oh it's nice it's, it's good it looks nice. looks really good if you have like the the ultra high definition monitor and all that yeah yeah oh you have a monitor it's not on the tele no television. it's not on the television i got a little office with the game set up in it oh okay so you have like speakers and all that good stuff no I use headphones okay yeah, yeah I use a headset that means you're into it right yes yeah that and it's also really <laughs> Originally, I got one of those headsets just because... Oh, to play in the night. To right? play at night with yeah. the kids so they wouldn't wake up. And ever since then, they've just been great. So That's what that $1,600 little piece is under that amp so I can plug my headphones into it. <laughs> 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 Again, $1,600. It does more than that. Yes. But, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally, it becomes a thing, right? If yeah. You, yeah. If you, if you really want to do toys, something. Yeah. That's the time, too, right? Exactly. Yeah, or first thing in the morning, whatever. Yep. yep. And, you know, you know, I don't... I don't play video games while they're awake typically. You know, I'll wait till they go to sleep and go play an hour or so before I go to bed, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But, but it's, it's like, a good way to unwind. Yeah, exactly. What about uh, what, like the virtual reality stuff we see? I haven't started or got into any of that yet. But is it on your radar? No. Nah. Not at all? Not yet. Oh, okay. I'm I don't curious. Know how much. I'm curious, and I'm afraid that if I really like it, then I'm going to have to spend so much money on something that... <laughs> well, then you'll just be living in player one, right? Yeah, exactly. One, right? And I don't, uh, the kids will be poking you, and you'll be in <laughs> some other world. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, well, what's wrong with this? <laughs> There'd be a lot wrong with it, probably. Yeah. But no, you've got a good balance, though, an hour at, at night. You know what I mean? You're an executive chef at a catering company right yeah. now, yeah. so... Yeah. I think you should take up the woodworking. I'm, I'm going to for sure. I'm yeah. excited about it. I've got so many. I've been watching YouTube. I'm probably you know an expert at this point after all the yeah. YouTube videos that I've watched. What would you do? I mean, I said cutting board. I said you know knife, saya. But what, it, it, is there anything that you would start with? Um, like a table or probably just something small. Like yeah. right now, my we were going to build uh, with the the pallets that I found. Pull those pallets off and make like a dog bowl holder for the dogs for their food. Yeah. So that was going to be one of the first things that I did. I like that idea. How, yeah. How old's a dog? I have three dogs at this point. Uh, I have a one-year-old boxer puppy. Okay. And she is excited and fun. <laughs> and then I have an all-white husky and then a German shepherd husky mix. I have a soft spot for huskies. <laughs> I love huskies. Yeah, they, they both have blue eyes. Uh like I said, one of them's all white, and then one of them looks like a German Shepherd, but he's got blue eyes. My dog is not here again. Um, I don't know. <laughs> he's always here, but he's with my my daughter. There's side. It's a sidekick. Ah, okay. She, she, he he loves her. Yeah. But and he's very gentle. So the husky sheds right. Oh, look crazy. Yeah, my my folks. It breaks still breaks my heart. When I was like six, they got rid of my husky. And that was my dog, oh, and it was geez. because it uh, it shed too much, and I guess it was too much for him. But I, I loved that dog. I will never, ever let them forget that. <laughs> it was Shannon. She let me do anything I wanted to. to yeah, her. the Huskies are great with kids. Yeah, I mean, you can go up and literally, basically, pull on them, yank their ear, pull their tail, and they won't touch the kids. That's if I how, do it, they get a little upset. But yeah, yeah, that's how. Uh, I kind of rolled the dice when I got Finn, who is a rescue. And mm-hmm. we think he's a bearded collie, like a purebred bearded collie, as far as we can tell. Mm-hmm. Don't know. But he, uh, 
I rolled the dice because I wasn't sure what I was going to get with with my daughter. Yeah. And I wanted a similar experience. You know, that was like the the hope. Yeah. And he she will sit on him like a horse <laughs> and he'll fall over and she'll pull on his ear like that and and just pull him around by the collar all through the house and yeah. he's just like Okay, All where right. are we going next? That's like why I said if she's going to the grandparents. He's just like, well, I'm going with her. <laughs> All right, you sure? Yeah. But my folks have uh, two golden doodles too. So, oh, okay. Yeah, they go. They're like a family over there too. Nice. So, but three dogs, so three separate bowls. Ah, uh, yes. That's a good project. Yeah, nice little project to start three with. Three water bowls too. Or do you have like a constantly? Broke? No, we we got to figure something out for that. We just rescued the the other the German Shepherd Husky recently, and he drinks a ton, and the yeah. little puppy drinks a ton, and they are going. We have like a bigger water bowl, and they go through it in you know if they're outside running, oh, they'll yeah, come yeah. back in and drink it. Real I got, quick. I'll show you uh, something you should get. I don't have it here, but my folks have it. I'll send you. Uh, yes, it's like it fills up with at, uh, at least a couple gallons, and it always fills up the bowl. Oh, there we go. And you never have to think about it because yeah. my dog just plows through water. You fill, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's amazing. It is amazing with three of them. <laughs> my goodness, but they're good with the kids. Yes, all of them are good with the kids. One, the little puppy gets a little excited, and she's she's almost sixty pounds, so she can it's big. She can do a little damage, but she just. She'll protect the kids from the other dogs. Like if they start, you know, playing, yeah. and you know, they make a lot of noise. She'll stand in front of my daughter and make sure they don't get to her. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. It's great. The dogs are dogs are good little, yeah, good little companions. Do uh, so? Do you guys have a yard there? Mm-hmm. Do you guys do you do any kind of like gardening when you're? No, nothing. There's no point in doing gardening. They'll dig it up. Oh, the dogs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I learned that too. I have. Yeah, he went in there and there's like bones. In our garden. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, yeah. Uh, you, that, that, you could do that. You should. I'll show you something we put together, these raised bed gardens. Ah. You could throw in a little raised bed yeah. and throw some herbs in the back. There's some woodwork for you. Yep, yep. yep. Have some fun with that. <laughs> that. I mean, that's a that's a great way to start, right? Yes, yeah. Something simple that if you make a mistake, it's covered in dirt anyway, so you don't have to worry it's about it. It's covered in dirt, yeah. <laughs> but you would have to worry about the dogs. But... You fill it up with uh, like some thyme and oregano or something, and that you, as as a chef, you might enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, for sure. Anything else you want to touch on? I don't think so. I yeah, think we covered a good bit here. Yeah, how do you feel? All right, I feel good. Good, good. Well, thank you for making the hike out here. Yeah, That's, you should stop yeah. at the woodworking place on the way back. I'm, I'm, I was thinking about it. I'm probably going to have to put okay. that as my my way home. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if it see if it's it should be open on Sunday. I would think so, but it might be like a noon thing. I don't even know it, what time it, it is. Oh, it's eleven fifteen. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty early. Yeah. Oh, that's good though. So you've got the rest of the day. You got the, you're going home to the family. Going home to the family. I don't know what's in the docket today, so we'll have to. Same see. here. I got. Um, it's interesting. My folks live over near Bee Cave, mm-hmm. and the neighbor is like the keyboard player for Spoon. Oh, really? Which is cool. And I've I've never met him, um, but there's part of me that I just want to go back. Yeah, I play guitar, and here I have a podcast, and you listen to it all. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'll like geek out yeah, for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm, I, I like Spoon, um, but um, I already know that if I saw him, I've never actually met him. But the kids want to go play with the, my daughter today, so... If I run into him, I might go into one of those, like, shaking, nervous sweat things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sound all weird when what? I talk about a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do they call that? The uh, um, When you meet someone. Starstruck. Starstruck, yeah, yeah. That happened to me with, um, do you know, so Jack Allen's. Mm-hmm. Do you know, so it's not Jack Allen, right, who owns the place, no. or is it? I think it is. Okay, so I know there's two guys, and I don't know who I met. But I met, you know, whoever I met had like, he was a short, stocky guy with like curly hair, looked kind of like Eddie Vedder. And I was just, I don't know him at all. It's just a local, you know, yeah. and I couldn't, I, my voice was shaking. I was sweating. I was like, what is happening to me? I don't know you. I'm not even excited, but I can't control this. <laughs> he just had like a presence. Yeah. yeah but uh, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. But good. I thank you for coming. This just this is episode fourteen. Wow, episode fourteen. You're really chugging along. We're chugging along. I think now that we're here, tomorrow will be one month 
of doing these podcasts. So 14, I might tone it back to doing about two a week. Yeah, I was going to say slow it down a little bit so you have... Just kind of, and then maybe get on a schedule for how they're released. And just for the record, because I really don't know how to put this stuff at the beginning, but we've had a thousand listens, which is insane. Um, that, that doesn't mean a thousand people. It means like if I've listened 10 times, you know, that yeah. would qualify. Yeah. And I've listened more than 10 times. So I, <laughs> I have a, I have a part in that number. But a thousand Austin all day, you know, in less than a month. It started April 6th and, to, you know, today's the 5th. So I'm pretty I'm pretty happy. Yeah, it's with, impressive. I like it. Well, you, I tell everybody, please come back. I mean, life changes. Yeah. Um, especially you guys, you guys are going through changes. Yeah, we're we're building a house right now in Round Rock, so okay, so that's that's that's, a, that's very exciting. Yeah, and that everything is growing so quickly. I mean, there's so much to you know touch on, mm-hmm. and um, you know we had this conversation today, but we could I'm sure turn off the mic and turn it back on and have a whole nother conversation. So yeah, absolutely, we can talk about something else. Yeah, find one nice subject to go on for an hour. Yeah, well, please. Uh, I'm eventually this will be season one. And I've got some ideas floating around where maybe there's, you know, season two is with multiple people or season two is where we focus on a subject or Mm -hmm. like attempt to focus on one subject for a a conversation. Yeah. But right now, it's just an evolution. And I thank you for for coming out and being a part of it. My pleasure, man. It's great. All right. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) 